Hello my loves, Tony here with another fun and free crochet pattern. This is my fireside basket. It's a great way to stash handmade blankets, oversized Christmas presents, or you can use it as a really cute laundry hamper. Today we're making this adorable tiny version, but you can find the free pattern for both sizes over on my blog, tlycblog.com. If you're excited to make the fireside basket, please like this video and consider subscribing to my channel for more free patterns, product reviews, and tutorials. Now let's talk materials. To make our basket, we need category five bulky weight yarn. Today I'm using Lion Brand Hue and Me. We know this is a category five bulky weight from the label, and I'm using one skein of the color Desert and two skeins of the color Agave which is this pretty green right here. We are gonna use our yarn held double, so you can wind it into cakes or pull yarn from the inside and the outside of the ball at the same time. In addition to our yarn, we also need a nine millimeter and a six and a half millimeter crochet hook, a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, and some kind of pin. I'm using rust-proof T-pins, but you could use any kind of push pin, like sewing pins. We'll also need blocking supplies, but that's completely optional, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. We'll start with our green yarn. I'm gonna remove the label so I can get the ends from the inside and the outside of the ball. So there's the outside end. And here's the inside end. So I'm gonna hold those together and work two strands of yarn throughout this project. The first thing we need to do is make a magic ring. To do that, hold the tails in your right hand and lay the yarn over your hand like this. And then take the side that's coming from the ball, wrap it around your first finger two times. Bring that first loop over the second, second over the first and off your finger. And then pull to tighten and when you pull the ends, you'll find that you have an adjustable ring. So we're gonna flip the ring so the knot is at the top and insert our nine millimeter crochet hook. From here, we're gonna pull up a loop that does not count as a chain and we'll chain one. Now into this loop, we want to work six single crochet. So we're going to push our hook into the loop, yarn over from back to front around the hook Pull up the loop, we've got two loops on our hook. Yarn over from back to front and pull through both loops. Now when making these stitches, you can make them a little looser. Don't make them too tight or they're gonna be hard to work into later. So there's one single crochet. Here's two. Here's three. Here's four. Here's five and six. We're gonna pull that loop up, take our ends, pull tightly to cinch this closed. So those are our first six single crochet stitches. I'm gonna insert my hook back in the loop, tighten down, and if you're having trouble seeing your stitches, I like to count the V's here at the top of the stitches. So here's one, two, three, four, five, and six. We're gonna start working into a spiral. So now is a good time to place your marker if you want, but I'm gonna work a couple more rounds before I place my marker. So next round, we're gonna place two single crochets in each of these stitches. It's gonna get us from six stitches to 12. So we're gonna insert our hook under both loops of that single crochet stitch, pull up a loop, and single crochet and we're gonna work one more single crochet into that same stitch, just like that. So there's one. Here's a second stitch. Again, making sure I don't make these too tight. Here's the third. Here's four. Here's five and six. Now's a good time to place the marker. I like to place my marker on the last stitch of the previous row, just so I'll know when the row actually ends. For round three, we're gonna place two single crochet in the next stitch and one single crochet in the following. So two single crochet go here, there's one, 
into one single crochet in the following. Two single in the next, there's one, and two, one in the following. Two single in the next, one, and two, single in the following. And we'll do that all the way around. Now I'm back at my marker, I'm gonna drop it, place my one single crochet here, and replace it. Just right under the top loops of that stitch. So that's round three. Here in round four, we're gonna single crochet in each of the next two stitches, and then increase, so place two single crochet in the stitch after that. So we're gonna single in each of the next two, and increase in the following stitch. Single in two, one, two, increase here. Single in two, one, two, increase here. I'm back at my marked stitch. I'm gonna drop that, complete the stitches, which is two single crochets in this stitch. One and two and then mark it. Here in round five, we're going to increase in this first stitch and single crochet in each of the next three stitches. So here's an increase, so two single crochets in this stitch, single crochet in each of the next three. There's one, there's two, and there's three. Increase, single in each of the next three. There's one, there's two, and there's three. Increase, single in each of the next three. There's one, two, and three. We got three stitches left, single crochet in each of those. Here's one, here's two, and three. And now we'll move our marker. And we can move on to round six. So for round six, we're going to single crochet in each of the next four stitches and increase in the following stitch. So here's one, two, three, and four increase in this next stitch. So here's one single crochet and two. Single in four, one, two, three, and four, increase. Single in four, one, two, three, four, increase. And we've got our last stitch here, which gets an increase. And we'll replace our marker. Let's move on to round seven. And that starts with an increase and then single crochet in each of the next five. So increase in this next stitch, so two single crochets go here. There's one and two in single crochet five. One, two, three, four, five. Increase, single crochet five. One, two, three, four, five. Five more stitches left. So we've got one, two, three, four, and five. Now we'll replace our marker 
and we can move on to our final round for the base, and that is round eight. Following the same pattern that we've been doing for the base, we're now going to have six single crochet and then an increase. So here's one, two, three, four, five, and six, and then our increase. So two single crochet in the following stitch. There's one and two. Again, six single crochet, one, two, three, four, five, and six, followed by an increase. And our last stitch here on the base is our marked stitch, and that one gets an increase. There's one single crochet, and right back into that same stitch, I'm gonna place a second. Assuming you're using the same yarn as I am, the same size hook, and you have a similar gauge to me, here's how we'll measure the base of our basket. So with your tape measure, gonna measure from end to end across the center, and mine is about eight and a half inches, and that's wide enough for me. You can continue in this increase pattern if you want to make a bigger basket, but this feels like a good place to stop. Now I need to make the sides of my basket. So what I'm gonna do is flip my work over and we're gonna start working around the perimeter of our basket in just basic single crochet stitches. So I am gonna place a marker around the body of this last stitch. And I'm just gonna leave that there because that's gonna help me measure the sides of my basket because I'm going for about six inches up the side of my basket. So now I'm just going to single crochet in the next stitch and each stitch around. So we finished one round so far on our base, and if we curl things up, we can notice that by no longer increasing, we're creating the sides of our basket. So by continuing to work around in a single crochet, we're going to make our sides. Now is a really good time though to stop and weave in the ends from the center of our work. From here, we just wanna continue working in a single crochet. I'm going to work a few more rounds and come back and show you what my sides are looking like. I'm making some progress on the sides of my basket, but I'm running low on this first ball of yarn. So I want to show you how we'll add our second ball of yarn. So I'm gonna continue working in just single crochet until I have just enough left to be able to weave in the end. So I stopped when there were two loops left on the hook for this single crochet, and I have about What's this, maybe six inches of yarn left. So I have two strands from my new ball of yarn. So one from the inside, one from the outside. I'm going to leave about six inches of a tail, yarn over my hook and pull through to complete the single crochet. To make it easier on myself, I'm going to work over my ends. So first I'm gonna grab the ends that were from the previous ball of yarn. And I'm just gonna hold that end towards the back of the work. When I go into my stitch, I'm going to also catch that end, pull up my loop, and complete my single crochet. Then that way I'm working over my ends and I won't have to weave it in later. Continue to work over that end until you just kind of can't anymore. Just gonna pull it. There we go, we've got plenty of ends to work over. That feels like long enough to work over that end. So now I'm just gonna cut it off. And I can continue working in my spiral. And when I make my way back around to this other end, I'm gonna do the same. Just hold it behind your working row and work in that end as you go. I've still got a little ways to go on the sides of my basket because I'm gonna make mine nice and tall. When I'm ready to change color to my accent color, I will join you right back here. I continued working on my basket and I got to 10 rounds up the side and I'm happy with the height of that. So to count my rounds, I just went from my marked stitch up to my working round. So one, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 rounds. Now I want to change color to my accent color and we're going to work six additional rounds just the same as before. So I'm gonna pop my hook back in here, start this stitch, stop when there's two loops, I'm going to fasten off, leaving a long tail, and I'm done with the green for now. I'm going to get both ends of my pink color, kind of cut this off because it's a little frayed, hold those together, and just like before, I'm going to lay this new color over my hook, pull through to complete the stitch. I'm going to grab those two green tails, and I'm gonna work over those just like we did before. And again, I'm just gonna work six rounds in this pink color, just single crocheting each stitch around. So I've got my six rounds of pink here. So this was my color change. And I count one, two, three, four, five, six rounds. So for my very last stitch, I'm just gonna slip stitch in the following stitch. Just pop my hook back in. This was a single crochet. In the next stitch, I'm just gonna place a slip stitch, insert under both loops of that stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then pull through the remaining loop on your hook. Pull that loop up and out, cut, and lift your loops. I'm actually going to weave this end in on the front side of these stitches. From here, we're going to actually sit our basket up and we're going to fold it right at our color change. This is decorative and it also gives our basket a little bit more strength through the top to stand up well. So this is what our basket looks like. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. <laughs> So this is super cute on its own, but we're gonna add one little accent up here, which is a beautiful crocheted ribbon to bring it all together. Now we're going to switch to our six and a half millimeter hook and we're going to use one strand of our green yarn. Start by making a slip knot and we're going to make foundation single crochet stitches. We're doing this for a couple reasons. We're making foundation single crochet stitches because our ribbon needs to reach around the entirety of our basket. At this point, I don't know exactly how long that ribbon needs to be, so foundation stitches gives me a chance to work my beginning chain and my first row of single crochet stitches to the length that I need, and I can then measure that length around the basket without having to rip out single crochet stitches and a chain if I go too long. We're going to make a row of foundation single crochet stitches that is a multiple of six plus one. Here's how we do our foundation single crochet stitches. We're gonna start with a chain two. There's one and two. Make sure you keep those chains loose. We're gonna insert our hook in the first chain Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through one. Then yarn over and pull through two. That's our first stitch. So here's what we're looking at. This is the top of our stitch and the bottom of our stitch is here. You'll notice that the bottom of our stitch has two loops. That was made by yarning over and pulling through one before we yarned over and pulled through two. We need to know that because that's where we're going to insert our hook moving forward to add more foundation stitches. So we're gonna insert our hook under both of those loops here at the bottom yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. Insert again under both loops there at the base, yarn over, pull up the loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. Again together, inserting your hook under both loops of this stitch here at the base, right here. Insert, yarn over, pull up the loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. As you continue on, your foundation stitches are going to look like this. So again, this is the top of your row and this is the bottom of the row. We're gonna continue working in foundation stitches until we have a multiple of six plus one that easily fits around the circumference of our basket. Now I filled my basket with a couple of hand towels so I can get an accurate understanding of the measurements around the top of my basket. I continued working on my foundation row and I found that 79 single crochets comfortably fits around the top of my basket. So I'm gonna stick with 79. I'm gonna pop my hook back into my loop, tighten down, chain one, and turn my work. And now I'm going to single crochet in each stitch across. As you can see with our foundation stitches, we have loops here at the top of our stitches. So I'm gonna insert my hook under that stitch, pull up the loop, and complete the single crochet. And I'm just gonna do that for each stitch across, and it just gives a little bit more heft to our ribbon, makes it a little bit wider, 
And I think it makes it look a bit prettier. You can skip this step if you want to, but I think it's definitely worth it and you should still have plenty of yarn left over. So I just have a few single crochets left here on this row. And that row is complete. We're gonna chain one and turn our work and begin our bobble row. For our bobble, we're gonna single crochet in our first stitch here. Then we're gonna chain seven. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. We're going to find the third chain from the hook. So here's one, two, and three. And we're gonna double crochet three together through that chain. To do this stitch, we're going to yarn over and pull up a loop in that chain. Now, this chain has three parts. It's got this top loop here, this bottom loop here, and our back bump. We're gonna go through the top loop and the back bump, so under two loops of that chain. We're gonna pull up a loop, three loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through, two. Yarn over, go back into the same chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. There's three loops on the hook at this point. One more time, yarn over, pull up a loop in that chain, yarn over, pull through two. We've got four loops on our hook. As you notice, I just tightened down this first loop because I want to keep my loops pretty tight here to keep my bobbles um, nice and tight and, and they'll pop better. So I'm gonna yarn over and pull through all four of those loops. And again, tighten down that first loop on the hook. Now I'm going to chain three, one, two, three. And I'm gonna double crochet three together in that third chain from the hook. So this one right here. Again, I'm going to insert my hook under that top loop and the back bump, just like that. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two. Again, yarn over, insert into the chain, yarn over, pull up the loop. Yarn over, pull through two, three loops on the hook now. Yarn over, insert into the chain. Yarn over, pull up the loop. Yarn over, pull through two. Four loops on the hook now, tighten down that first loop. Yarn over, pull through all four. Now I'm going to slip stitch in the chain that's at the base of this first double crochet three together. That's the same chain that I worked this double crochet three together into. So I'm going to slip stitch here, keeping my loops nice and tight and that bobble comes together just like that. So cute. And now I'm gonna chain four, one, two, three, four, and go back to my row. I want to skip five single crochet stitches. So here's one, two, three, four, five, and I'm going to single crochet in the following stitch. So this is what our bobble ribbon looks like. Now you can see the back of this bobble is kind of open and that's okay because we're actually going to use this side of our ribbon so that bobble is nice and closed and looks great. Let's make another bobble together. We'll start with a chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Double crochet three together in the third chain from the hook. There's one, two, three. Make sure you're inserting under the top loop and the back bump just like that. So the only thing on the other side of that hook is that bottom loop. Yarn over and pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two, two loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two, three loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through four loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull through all four and tighten down. Chain three, one, two, three. And in the chain just above that three together, so it's one, two, three chains from the hook, we're gonna double crochet three together into that chain, making sure we pick up that top loop and the back bump. Yarn over, pull up the loop. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull up the loop. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, and pull up the loop again. Yarn over, pull through two four loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through all four, tighten down, and we're gonna slip stitch right here in the base of that first double crochet three together. From here, we're gonna chain four, one, two, three, four. Skip five stitches here on our ribbon, one, two, three, four, five. Single crochet in the following stitch. So here's a quick peek at our ribbon so far. You can really see how it's coming along. We're gonna repeat this all the way across and our last step is gonna be placing a single crochet in the final stitch of our ribbon. So keep working on your ribbon and then join me back here and I'll show you how we'll affix this to our basket. And we'll place a single crochet right there. Pull that loop up and we're going to fasten off. We can weave in our ends. So remember, the side we just finished, we're actually going to use the opposite side on our basket. 
So we're going to weave the end into the side we just finished. So we have an end on this side. I'm just going to work under several loops of stitches here. And then on the opposite side, again, making sure I'm weaving the end into the correct side. That's the side where the bobbles are open in the back. Now an optional step here, which I am going to do, is steam down my ribbon. The reason I'm gonna do that is because you can see like it's curling a bit, it's cupping a bit here in my single crochet rows. We could really make these bobbles pop a bit more. So if you've got the time and the patience, I'm gonna show you how to steam our ribbon before we put it on our basket. The first thing we need to block our ribbon are block boards so I have three here because I measured the top of my basket around and it's about 31 inches so I'm gonna block my ribbon to 30 inches I'm blocking it slightly smaller just so it stretches nicely around the top of my basket in addition to my blocking boards I also have rust proof T pins and that's how we're going to secure our ribbon to our boards start here in the corner and affix my ribbon and then I'm gonna count over 30 blocks because these blocks are one inch. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then 30 is right here. And then I'm going to pin my ribbon down just like so. And I'm putting a few extra pins because we're going to block this fairly aggressively. So I'm pinning between each bobble. Now that the top is pinned, I also want to pin the bottom. As you can see, our bobbles look fine, but I love it when these bobbles are stretched out a little bit more and you've got more of that negative space. So comparing this bobble to that bobble, I just prefer it to look like this. And the way I can achieve that with blocking is I'm going to pull that bobble and place a pin just at the top of it. And then that way it's going to stretch the yarn and place the bobble a little bit further down. And then when I am done steam blocking this, that bobble will stay about where I put it and it will just be a little bit more relaxed. Do that all the way across my ribbon. I have my garment steamer heating up. I can now push this trigger and steam is now coming out and I can work along my ribbon to soften up these stitches and really get the effect that I'm going for. Again, this step is not 100% necessary, but I think it's the difference between something that's done and something that's finished, if that makes sense. So I'm just slowly going over the bobble, the cord, and the ribbon, making sure all the different parts of our ribbon soften up into the shape we want. I did a few passes with the steamer. It's damp which is great, that's exactly what we want. So I'm going to leave this be here. I'm gonna let it dry. I would recommend overnight if you have the time, if not, just a long afternoon, just so it'll dry completely. So our ribbon is dry now, just dry to the touch. So I'm gonna take all my pins out. We can see that our ribbon kept its beautiful shape. All of the bobbles are nice and open. This is exactly what I was looking for and now we can attach this to our basket. So I have my basket here and I'm going to find the back which is here, and I know that because I have that little jog from where I did my slip stitch. So I'm gonna hold my basket up. I'm gonna bring the end of my ribbon to the back of my basket and kind of start laying it across my basket. So with the same rust proof T pins I used before, I'm going to attach my ribbon to my basket. You'll note that I'm like two rows of my single crochet stitches down and I'm just pushing a pin straight through my basket. I'm gonna put one every couple of stitches. Not pulling too tight because remember we block this to about an inch from the end. So we don't wanna pull too much or we will have too much ribbon. We're back at the end of our basket. We've got just enough ribbon. And we'll put this one right here. I'll have it slightly overlap just so there's no gaps at the back. Now to attach the ribbon to the basket, we just need a long length of our green yarn. So starting right here at the back, I'm going to take these pins out and put my first bit of my seam 
through both of these ends of the ribbon. So I'm going right through the top, through the entire body of the basket and through the other side. Then we're gonna come up through the inside of the basket into the next stitch. And we're just going to do a running stitch all the way along the top of our ribbon. So I'm all done adding on my ribbon and this is literally the cutest basket I've ever seen. I absolutely love it and I hope you do too. If you enjoyed this tutorial, I would love if you gave this video a thumbs up and shared it with some friends. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you next time.